Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the stand-up meeting for September 6th, 2022 for Open Research Institute. Um, this is where we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned for the next week, uh, if we need any resources, and if we have any roadblocks that we need help with. Um, so we had a successful show at DEF CON with lots of demonstrations, a poster session, lots and lots of conversations and interactions with various villages. We helped sponsor a village, so retail village, a retail hacking village was something that we helped uh, enable. We were at RF village, radio frequency village, and had um, lots of posters, um, lots of demos, and we participated in a uh, event over in the policy village where we learned a lot of different, very interesting things. And we helped put people in touch with each other uh, between different uh, regulatory agencies. Uh, so really successful show. We had a lot of fun and we also caught COVID. So the entire um, <laughs> San Diego part of the crew uh, came down with it. Uh, recovery is uh, nearly complete. Um, yeah, masks and masks were required at DEF CON. Um, this probably helped quite a bit, uh, but didn't eliminate the, the risk. So that's what we've been up to. We spent um, a lot of time getting things ready for demonstrations and those demonstrations have, have been uh, continued. Uh, we're gonna carry them through for Ham Expo, which is our next big event coming up in a short order. That's in mid-September, mid 16th, 17th, and 18th of September. It's an online virtual event and I'll, I'll put um, summaries and some links out on the mailing list. So that's that's what we've been up to. Uh, I've not done a whole lot of FPGA work except to sort of read up and lay the groundwork for the uplink receiver. So we will be putting in a, a polyphase channelizer. Um, that's our plan. And then each of those channels is going to have to demodulate and decode the opulent voice protocol that we have been demonstrating and working on. Um, some some updates on on that. Uh, I think Paul probably has plenty to say about that because he's giving a presentation about it. And also in the projects session, section of QSO today, we'll have a opulent voice, uh, some documentation, opportunity for people to drop by and, and ask questions. Um, we've been trying to get to the point where we can have opulent voice working on the RF, or hack RF porta pack combo. This is a really neat. Uh, SDR combo, the porta pack adds a uh, user interface um, to the to the hacker of. Um, and there's a whole uh, code base with with it called mayhem. And we decided to pick up uh, the uh, mic transmit uh, application on on the porta pack on the build from mayhem and see if we could transmit uh, FM over 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 that. So what this is is essentially sort of like an HT. Um, you know, uh, it has FM, AM, LSB, USB, uh, maybe a couple other modes. And we found out that the FM voice quality on in Mayhem in this in this app was very poor, unexpectedly poor. It sounded like it was um, distorted. And so we we dug in and and we have improved the voice quality in the Porta Pack uh, transmit microphone application. Um, and it took rolling back the the mic boost. There was a 20 dB microphone boost uh, amplification. It's the second ampli amplification stage for the microphone. The first stage is set by an uh, external resistor in the circuit. Uh, we haven't looked very closely at that, but the removing the 20 dB mic boost improved the audio quality uh, that the that this um, combination of stuff transmits. And then we noticed that the, the setup for the audio codec for, um, for how the sample rates are controlled, it didn't look like it was done. I looked, there was a, a default settings and some of the settings were not, didn't make sense to us. Um, there was a commented out part where the settings did make sense. So we essentially uncommented that in the Mayhem build and wow, the audio quality improved dramatically. So it's now pretty clear. It's low though, the levels are a little bit low and there's a background hiss. Um, 
we did a, a experiment to show that that it was um, the porta pack and the hacker f combo is actually microphonic so some of the noise may just be inherent and in the hardware uh, and all of this is kind of building up to uh, using our uplink protocol uh, terrestrially as well as uh, for for space uh, as an uplink uh, and just to get it get it out there into more hands so not directly related to FPGA but it is uh, some big step for, steps forward on the uplink protocol. So there'll be plenty more uh, videos and and uh, more demos that will be published uh, over the course of September. All right, that's that's all I have here. Um, I don't see Anshul or Everest, but I know that they've been talking back and forth about getting the encoder live over the air from the ZC706, and it looks like there's been some progress there. Um, there's there's some neat stuff going on. Uh, so if you are on Slack, check out the hashtag or Octothorpe FPGA channel, and uh, just uh, keep to keep up. It's uh, it's good stuff. So hopefully by Ham Expo, we will also have a a, um, a demo of the downlink over the air on that system. So currently the demo works on the Pluto, and uh, not yet working on the ZC706, the larger FPGA. Okay, James, off off to you. Um, what have you been up to? Tell us all about what's going on in Remote Lab South, and if you have any roadblocks, need any resources. Uh, Remote Lab South is continuing with uh, construction efforts to expand our usable space for technologies and things such as that. Uh, we're not encountering much in the way of roadblocks or difficulties there, though we have had a uh, as like got this news just on Friday, I was going to bring this up in this meeting. Uh, some not great news in regards to our grant from the FDA, being that CBER has sent back that they are not interested in our, in our letter of intent. Uh, Michelle, you're still muted. Oh yeah, thanks. Oh no problem. It's uh, it's not going to be not going to be a fit for everything. So we'll keep keep looking. There's lots and lots of opportunities at grants.gov. So if you want to take a take a look and see if there's anything uh, out there that we can apply for, then we'll keep looking. Um, yeah, it won't uh, it won't be a, won't be a fit for everything. That's totally fine. We'll keep an eye out for other other FDA grants. Um, this particular one for people that are that are following along is for a, a workshop or a scientific meeting. So what we might want to do is just look for something that would allow us to do the work directly so that may be more in line with their what they're thinking if we can All get right. any feedback from them that that'd be great i know that that's not always uh possible um but you know they might say this would this is great but uh here's what we'd really rather see or uh the fish fish farming may not be a very high priority for the u.s uh fda so uh it's very good to to have the the feedback and um, and then we can pick up and move forward. So thank you very much for the leadership on on all that uh, and all of the things that you did to prepare for that request and that letter uh, are that's what we're going to be needing for f for future uh, applications. So thanks. I'm just trying to help. Um, I guess that's pretty much all to report from uh, Remote Lab South for at least for right now. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Thanks so much. It's uh, very exciting to see these things come together. All right, Paul. Off to you, sir. Hello, everybody. Um, I've been pretty busy getting together you know, talks for Ham Expo. A couple of weeks of recovery from COVID really yeah, impacted the schedule on that. So I'm officially behind after the deadline now on the second talk. I completed a talk on the authentication, authorization, and et cetera, the five A's. Uh, and that's been submitted and it's ready to go. And I'm working on a second talk, which is about document voice, or more specifically about voice quality and how it's terrible and needs to get better, and how document voice can, uh, can be a step forward in that direction. Um, after that, maybe few days doing something else <laughs> will be called for and then uh, then back on to whatever in full steam. Nothing going on uh, that I know of with Remote Lab West here. Everything's, uh, no reports of problems anyway. 
we haven't been using it intensively and I don't know if anybody else has either. So yeah, I think a lot of the action is over in um, Remote Lab UK. So that right now is the uh, source of a lot of activity. Yeah, as good as we can make the Remote Lab, it's still easier to work on whatever hardware is local to you. Yeah. So that's, that's all I've got here. Look forward to whatever's coming next. Yeah, same. I feel feel the same way. It's been a, a, a good hard pull for uh, getting things ready for DEF CON and for Ham Expo. And it's nice to be able to kind of step up to the to the level of uh, you know the code that we have and the the demonstrated work that we have, and then starting to pull it together, fit it together uh, into a system is very exciting. Cool. All right. Any other comments or questions or any resources needed from anybody? All right. Thanks so much. We'll uh, like I said, we'll have a lot coming out of Ham Expo, and so keep an eye on the mailing list and uh, and help us spread the word about the the various talks. Um, it'd be wonderful to have a good broad uh, Q and A at each of the talks, and uh, you know just build build our network of interested people. So thanks to everybody, and see you next week. <laughs>